Wait, wait. Oh, okay. Here we go. Okay, so. Uh, and I'll just, I'll just scale down at the bags. So move yeah, down. Well, we can talk. Okay, I speak, mean, speak. Okay, well, um, we're getting ready in, a, in about 45 minutes. A taxi is going to pick us up, take us to uh, Newark Airport, and then we're going to get a flight to Ottawa, stay overnight, and then the next day I think we're going up to uh, Baffin Iqu Island. Iqualuit. And we're going to meet the group there, and then a couple of days of training to get to know the dogs and how to set up the tent, and they're going to see how we ski and so on. And evaluate us, and train us, and I so think on. That's about it. And okay. get us. Huh. I, can, I, get us ready. I can hardly believe that uh, the adventure is now upon us, and you yeah. will you will be seeing more as we go along. So, Dad, are you looking a bit nervous? Well, yes, I am. I am. Oh. I'm apprehensive. Oh. Uh, exactly what I'm going to face. The mom's is not, so she's more confident. So. Okay. Well, the best of luck to you both, and see you in May. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Bye, darling. Bye. Have a lovely Bye. time with Poland. Here we are in Frobisher Bay, now known as Ikaluit. That's the Inuit name. And we're in Maddie's home. And this is the picture, the view from Maddie's home. This is about 68 degrees latitude. And we're getting oriented now with the group that we just met. And there's our leader, Maddie. And she's, already, she's just prepared a little snack. And now she's going to tell us, our group, uh, what we're going to be doing. A little orientation. Uh, there's Graham from England. Hi, Graham. And Helen, his daughter. And uh, I'm going to interview them a little later. So we're going to the top of the world. And the top of the world isn't mapped very well, and oftentimes it even has big blocks because there is this impression that there's nothing there and there's no reason why anybody would want to go there. Both factors are true. Now, there are a few people in the world who uh, are outside that realm. They're a little bit uh, unusual. They have that sense of adventure that they want to go somewhere different. Um, they want to go where they haven't been before, and that's the top of the world. So a few people have gone there. The hard part of getting there is not only the navigational challenges as we're going to meet, but actually um, uh, trying to find the pole. Okay. Now we're just going over the food. Oh, it's said she said she needs. Yeah, I'll check. Okay. This is dinners. So this is dinner, and we've got um, each night. Chicken, that's the Arctic. Arctic um, oh, right. okay. or something. All right. Yeah. So uh, we've got soup and um, cheese for lunch at minus yeah. 20 is worth yeah. It's like putting an ice cube in your stomach. Yeah. It, you can't chew it. it ta it's tasteless. So. Uh, what we're doing for lunch is we're having soup, and you put your nice frozen chunk of cheese in the in your soup, and it melts and cools the soup, and it's delicious. Mm. So um, that's what we're doing at night. And uh, so we have things like stroganoff, couscous, almond bean, um, various things. Now the the meals are all packed basically in twos. So we expanded out to seven. I've, uh, I've packed in. Now I have dried chicken, Patricia, and mm -hmm. some dried beef. And we can uh, just let us know if you want to not put in at the same time. Okay. This is Graham, and he, he's from uh, Jersey in the Channel Islands. Uh, I'm just curious, so what, what made you decide to uh, come on the, such a journey? I love the cold weather, I, I love the high Arctic, I like skiing, and I've done a number of trips before to the high Arctic. Oh, that's, that's interesting, and um, uh, let me see. This, this is the culmination of those trips, so this is really the big uh, uh -huh. A trip as far as the high art is concerned. And what do you, what do, you do for a living? Me? Yes. I, I run a trust and company administration firm in um, Jersey Channel Islands. I administer trusts and companies. 
I see. And this time you, you've come along with your daughter, Helen. Yes, indeed. And you've gone on trips with your wife too, I think. Yeah, I've uh, done three trips with my wife. And then she retired, feeling that uh, she would prefer hotels instead of tents in the future. I can't imagine why. <laughs> and now uh, uh, I've uh, done a trip with Helen three years ago, and now doing this one with her. Okay, I'm going to now have Helen say a few words. Thanks a lot, Graham. Not at all. Jay well, okay, so I think uh, Helen's going to say a few comments later. Um, perhaps. And in the meantime, I'll fill in and just say that it's been uh, very interesting. We've learned a lot in the last few days about uh, gear and about how to keep warm. Yes. And uh, we've been out skiing and we've been out uh, with the dogs, running them, and uh, very energetic. And it looks like we're going to have, well, some pretty tough times in the next 10 days. Uh, the plan is tomorrow morning to fly up to Eureka. You know, it's much further north than we are now. We're now we're at about 67, 68 degrees latitude. Eureka's way up. And then we're going to go spend the night there, and then from there we're going to go further north up to um, 86 degrees, where they have like a floating uh, fuel dump on the ice. And then we're going to pick up fuel and then keep flying further north. And they're going to put us down at about 88 and a half degrees, something like that depending on the ice conditions and how difficult it is. And it looks like it might be difficult. Lots of rubble, takes longer to traverse these things <coughs> with a sled and with skis. So that's the plan, and uh, we'll uh, update you. Here we are in Resolute, after flying up from Ikaluit. And this is at the airport. Here's the airport at Ikaluit. Going through our things, we have uh, to remove 50 pounds because we're overweight on the aircraft, which is leaving tomorrow for the ice. And uh, Maddie's just going through some things. We're trying to decide what to take out. We're going to take out about 50 pounds of dog food, but we still have uh, 50 more pounds of personal stuff we're going to have to remove somehow before we get on the charter plane tomorrow. Here's, here's, here's Blake from Alabama. He's going over the skis. Uh, it's minus 20 out there. Okay, this is Ozzy who's going to be uh, uh, entertaining us tonight in his uh, place, at his place. Just unloading gear here that uh, is going to be uh, stored overnight and transported tomorrow up to the ice. So that's the hill we're going to climb today for some exercise. Yeah. And there we're heading towards Resolute. building, wildlife office, fire hall on the right, that's another hotel on the right there, the health center is on the left, we have one nurse gym and town offices behind there at the other building. That's our one store town, the cooperative. Okay. We're just walking up a uh, hill outside of Resolute for a little practice. Hello, Jay. Here comes Patricia. Heading on up the hill. And that's where we're heading.
Here's Jay coming up the hill. Yes, Jay. Minus 20 <laughs> Celsius. Any word, any word for the camera? Well, when you breathe in, through your nostrils, they freeze up. Ha uh ha. -huh. But there's no wind here, so you don't feel it. It's very dry. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And the colors are so beautiful. Right. Tuliki would really enjoy this painting. Yes. Okay. Go. We had a change of plan, and we're not staying overnight here in... Um, no, we're going on, we're flying on to Eureka uh, in this Twin Otter that will take us to 89 degrees north latitude and then we're going to get out and start skiing and dog sledding. So now we're getting onto this plane and we, it's a two and a half fly, uh, hour flight uh, up to uh, Eureka. plane was, uh, it was, uh, these adventurers tried to fly this biplane from uh, the United States up to the North Pole. Uh, they got stuck here at 86 degrees uh, because there was water in the fuel line. So the plane's stuck here. Nobody knows what's going to happen to it. And uh, that was the end of their trip. It's probably about minus 30 degrees here. Uh, Two pilots, uh, including uh, Patty Doyle, a guy who looks a little bit like Santa Claus. He's uh, refueling uh, the plane so we can get up to uh, 89 degrees, where they're going to leave us on the ice and, uh, and go back. There's Blake from Alabama. Strong guy. One of our group of five. Well, I can tell you right now. <laughs> yeah, why did you come up here on this trip? <laughs> this must be pretty strange. What was some of the things you did to train for this? Oh, I ran with my back. Uh huh. Terrific. We'll talk later. Here's Helen, the daughter of Graham, posing for a shot.
just we just landed on the ice. So this is the beginning of our ice adventure to the North Pole. This is the campsite. There it goes. That's it. We're on our own for 10 days. Here's Rick. <laughs> Maddie. I should take a picture of our uh, stove here. It's quite warm at this tent, even though it's about minus. Oh, wait, boy, come on. Okay, there's Blake. And <laughs> Alan, Graham. Oh, hi, Joe. <laughs> Just had an excellent meal. Yes, really good. Very amazingly warm in this tent. Okay, now I'm on. Hello, everybody. Here it is, the 21st, and we're uh, after a full day. We're now taking down the cab in the morning. Good morning. That's Maddie. And it's another beautiful day up here on the ice. Hi, Ping. Beautiful morning. The wind's died down. North of the pole. Beautiful way. All's well. Glad to have you here. <laughs> And I understand we didn't drift so far last night. We drifted uh, about a mile south and a couple degrees east. So that's uh, not good, but it's not uh, dramatic. Yeah, it was worse uh, yesterday. We yeah, must much worse, yeah. Yeah, so what with the wind dying down, maybe we'll have some uh, beautiful high pressure and clear sailing. Very good. Thanks, Rick. Waxing the skis now. Rick is waxing Patricia's skis. There's a cord on a ridge here. These, these pressure ridges really prevent present quite an obstacle. There's Patricia going up to assist Maddie with a sled. Seven hundred pounds. Here come a couple of skiers. I think that's uh, Helen and Graham uh, making their way over the pressure ridge. There's Blake ready to go. Just, just fell. Come here, boy. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, 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 no! No. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. Come here. Pick 
comes Blake. Wait up there. Put it down. Where did he learn to drive a sled like this in Alabama? I don't know about him. <laughs> Yeah, boy. All right. Um, how do you enjoy this uh, trip so far? So far, it's uh, quite exciting. Today was actually much easier than yesterday because there was much less rubble. Go, keep, keep going, Bean. Uh, it was flatter? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, so we're making good progress today, wouldn't you say? I don't know. It's very difficult to tell because we may have been close to the east of Ah. So we'll soon find out. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. How, how do you feel today? <laughs> I'm having a sh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sick and tired, but apart from that, we're in paradise. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's receiving now, Jay. Yes, well, this is the second day already, and I feel better about, about it because I yes. have a lot of apprehensions. First night. Uh -huh. I didn't know what to expect. I thought I'd drown in the lead in the first five minutes. But uh, I found it's, it's, it's okay. It's doable. You know? Yeah. So, uh, and of course, without our two guides, we wouldn't survive, that's for sure. <laughs> Hello. <Thank you. laughs> Cheers. Hard work. My skis on. You're just hanging off your skis? Okay. You can see that's quite a job. Can you imagine doing that 10 times a day? S taking the straps out, uh, getting out of the skis, walking over press pressure ridge, putting the darn things back on again. It's a lot of work, kind of back breaking. So, look at that. Just to show you what's involved. Now she's got to jump out. Go ahead. She's stepping on the back. It still doesn't come out. You got to get out of your gloves and just work with your glove liners. There, she's out. We're trying to get across this lead. No, this way. Oh, there's a dog down. This is going to be our campsite tonight. Uh, it's about a quarter to six. So we've been skiing about seven or eight after. The dogs have to be, uh, the harnesses have to be taken off the doors. And then they're put on a line that is screwed and staked into the ice. Right here. Patricia and Helen skiing into camp. This is taking the liners off and for the evening and putting uh, the liners out to dry. Okay, sorry, man. And now, it's after dinner, we get a uh, two uh, quarts of hot water. water, which we take back to the uh, tent. Got your bottle. Uh, we can use them as hot water bottles if we wish. Crystal. Uh, but this way they won't freeze at night. 
Okay, his look. stuff hung to dry. Thank you. You want to help? Cleaning the pot of snow. Go ahead now. Okay, we're in a major sea of rubble all around us, preventing us from going north. And as far as I can see here, it looks it looks kind of uh, massive. As Helen would say, shitty. Thank you, Ray. So we just have to plot on and try to find our way around it. The dog teams will have a hard time. Thanks, Rick. It's beautiful, though, isn't it? Is yeah, it is beautiful, Helen. But it's going to be. What? It's just hell to travel through. Yeah, it is. Especially for the dogs, too. Coming out. Uh -oh. Rick's coming back. Rubble everywhere. It's going to be rough going today, and we're really behind schedule. This is not easy. Manny, come up across here. Taking off the boots is tiring and has to be done many times. And while uh, Rick got across without taking off his uh, his skis, the group is going to have to walk over. There goes Helen. There's uh, Maddie helping Patricia out of uh, her bindings. She's trying some new bindings that uh, Helen lent. Here goes Graham. You can't tell who's who under all this clothing. There's Graham making his way up over the uh, pressure ridge. There's going to be a lot of this today. Meanwhile, the dogs are resting. On day four, we, we hit some flat pans, but also a lot of pressure ridges, too. Here we go. Here we're adjusting the bindings uh, around the dinner table here in the kitchen tent. This is uh, the evening of day four. Just taking off. Uh, what else needs to be done? Anyone else take the things that uh, need? Leg gaiters there. This is uh, uh, repairing my. Repairing. Here's the second okay, chorus coming dry. along. It's quite warm in the tent, in the kitchen tent here. Uh, sewing kit. Helen's sewing kit. It's the morning of day five. Breaking camp. Matt and Maddie setting the traces for the dogs. Waxing the skis. The dogs are still tied to the uh, chain that's staked into the ice. And soon they're going to be harnessed. We're trying to get over a pan now, uh, over a lead. It's half frozen. Now, this is tricky.
Blake and Rick. This is Trish. An open lead. Yes, it's Helen and Graham across. Blake, uh, Blake uh, while he was uh, on thin ice today, he uh, crashed through with a sled and he was in the water up to his neck. What did that feel like? Well, it's, uh, the scary part was uh, not knowing how much ice had broken yeah. and so no, no, no. how far everybody was away from it. Anyway, it was just a struggle to get out. Yeah. But I got great care and treatment by everybody, so I drive off uh, fairly quick and yeah. things good. Did your whole life flash before you <laughs> yeah. when you were in the water? Yeah, yeah that did. <laughs> After about the fourth or fifth time going back down, yeah. I may not get out of here. Uh, that was some experience. Thanks, Blake. Sure. Now, okay, Maddie, yeah, it's rolling now. How did you know what to do, you know, when Blake fell in, in, the, in the Arctic, in the Arctic Ocean? Well, one of the first things to make sure is that I wanted to make sure other people didn't go in and people all focus on Blake and then have another a major catastrophe. Sometimes the thing, you have one person go through the ice and if people aren't watching, then we have a, a real major thing happen. So I wanted to flip my sled to make sure that my team didn't run back and join Blake's team and then both teams go through. I wanted to make sure that didn't happen. I wanted to make sure people try to keep their skis on and not panic. Um, and uh, once Blake was already out, by the time I got the throw line bag, and I threw my sled over, grabbed the throw line bag, and headed back to Blake. By that time, he'd climbed up over the sled and was on the ice. And then I realized, I took a look at the situation and decided the dogs seemed to be okay. The sled wasn't sinking and dragging them in. There were folks still headed that direction. And that um, it was best to take care of Blake. We weren't in a good position to set up. And so the first thing is to get him out of the wind and make sure that his, uh, he's not being cooled down. And he needs to keep moving. So once the uh, other folks got that second sled up, which was great teamwork, um, Rick went off and found a route that would take us up onto a really safe, safe pan. We didn't want to set up on thin ice. That's not a good idea. Mm. So that we didn't know if we were going to be setting up for a couple hours or for the night. We found a good safe place and uh, great teamwork. We got the tent up quite quickly. Once inside, it wasn't all that cold and we were able to change clothes and warm up his feet and make sure he was okay. Oh. Again, it was uh, not a case of hypothermia, it was a case of cold, wet. We needed to change that before it got into hypothermia. Right. And there were a few available bellies yes. to warm yes. Blake's yes. feet. Patricia donated a very <laughs> hot belly to warm up his feet, which is quite a heroic thing to do. Thanks. And it shows true <laughs> it was an order from Matty. <laughs> that wasn't an order. It's Thanks. Lights on. Oh yeah. It's ready. Well, uh, let's see a little update here. Um, we're at 89 degrees, uh, 19 minutes at this point. We started at 89 degrees, so basically we advanced 19 minutes, and we've got to go to uh, 60 minutes, 89. Minutes. 89 degrees, 60 minutes would be the North Pole. Uh, at this point, we're a little behind schedule right. because we really uh, have to do, we really should be around 23 minutes at this point. Right. So uh, we've been fighting a current, the southeast current, mm -hmm. that uh, is really um, subtracted from our actual distance across the ice. Yes. And uh, that current is moving even while we sleep. So when we wake up in the morning, we'll be further south and uh, lose a few miles each night. So it's made it very, very difficult. Uh, and uh, conditions have been tough, high pressure ridges. Today, of course, we had a lot of flat pans that have been with frozen leads and uh, some thin ice. Uh, and uh, we'll just see how it goes. Anyway, this is what, the fifth day, I think? Uh, yes, the end Completion of the fifth. Of the fifth day. The and we probably have another week, more or less. Yes. Of, um, well, Matty's just told us there are six more 
meals, evening six, meals. Six, six more meals. But like I said, we got about a month of pork, well. <laughs> so we can always live on peanuts and goobers and yeah. stuff like that. So are you glad that you're along? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, whether we reach the pole or not, I think uh, I've learned an awful lot about the Arctic, a lot of uh, new skills. I've learned about how people survive. I've learned a lot from our leaders here who really know. And mm -hmm. Just by example, we've learned a great deal. And yes. It's an amazing part of the planet. It's yes. like another planet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's totally alien and very, very interesting. So whether we reach the pole or not, I think uh, it's been worthwhile. Yes. Very good. I'm turning you off now. Okay. Here, we're on the move. We're on a piece of ice that's floating. I don't know if you if this is recording it, but can you see how we're drifting relative to the other ice? We're really moving along. And here we are on this block that's moving. <laughs> Six. Tiring for me anyway. I was on these uh, wax skis and I was used to the waxless skis. But uh, Rick lent me his wa waxless skis and that made it going a little easier at the end of the day. And, and Maddie was very helpful and let me, towed me behind the sled for a while. And uh, we finished the day a little early, around 5.20 p.m. Lake, uh, digging a little uh, well so we can uh, sit more comfortably inside the tent. Hey, on crack right here, that'll be our septic system. I noticed that crack. Yeah. It's going to be a very uh, interesting evening if it widens. There's a little crack tell, right in the middle of our tent, our, our kitchen tent. seventh day. Every morning we've been serenaded morning, by Paul? these dogs. Today Patricia is going to be running the uh, dogs here. Patricia harnessing two of the dogs. Day seven. Uh, 89 degrees, 20 minutes north. We still have 40 minutes to go, 40 miles, and only maybe four days to do it. So it really doesn't look too good We're reaching the pole. This current has been working against us. But, um, maybe the current will change. Maddie says sometimes currents swing around and head north. We can always hope for that.
putting those harnesses on is quite a job. There are a lot of little loops, and you got to get the legs into each loop. Oh, Trish probably got, got it on wrong. <laughs> got to get one leg in. And this dog's very cooperative. like this dog is all harnessed and ready to go. There's Maddie in front and Patricia in the back. Maddie, Maddie took my backpack. I forgot to take my backpack, and she hauled it all the way on her sled. Boy, I feel stupid. Okay. Uh, it's been uh, in the deep snow. It's quite uh, tough going. Dogs, dogs find it difficult to pull, uh, so I have to run the baby. Most of them are frozen over. Blake making his way across the broken ice. There goes Rick, leading the way. You're on. Oh, well, I, I just You're rolled on. over and bashed my other knee. That's Helen. But um, I'm okay now. <laughs> and Rick's way off front again, so I guess we have to keep going. Okay. Trudging north. And Graham, how do you feel today? I feel fine today. It's as usual, go to the north. Yay. Yeah, we made a few miles this morning, very Good quickly. Time. We did, I think four Good miles progress. this morning, and uh, we hope the drift is reducing. Great, thanks. We hope to do another forge this afternoon. Yeah, I hope so. Bye-bye. Cheerio. Bye -bye. comes Maddie and Patricia. frozen over. It's quite solid. You can see the dogs way over there at the pressure ridge at the edge. Patricia's in the rear with the wits slightly ahead of them and they're crossing a rough patch now. We're crossing a difficult lead here that's just been frozen over. It still has some thin sections. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Come on. Ah! 
this plague. Taking no chances this time, just letting the dogs run the sled without him on nearby. And it's made it across the thin ice. Blake does not want to fall in again. full of gear and um, everything sort of all right ready to go yeah. uh, it's the uh, ninth day yeah. and Jay just wants to say a few words just bring you up to date uh, we've done about over 30 miles across the ice uh, but um, the, the uh, drift has been working against us so we probably actually traveled 60 70 miles uh, across the ice and it just drifted back. So anyway, we're a little over halfway there. There's obviously enough time to get to the pole uh, on foot the way we've been doing it and uh, on, skis. on skis <laughs> and dog. And, uh, yes. There was a little dissatisfaction among uh, some members of the group about the way it was going, uh, about the, some miscommunication, some disorganization and uh, so that was expressed yesterday to the leaders who took it very well and uh, uh, the group, the sense of the group was that we would like to uh, fly the rest of the way to the pole, have a, find an air, a, a flat area where a plane can land uh, and uh, to take uh, that plane, the remaining 25 miles or so to the pole and uh, so we can uh, see it that way, land there hopefully. Uh, so it's, we're, that's what we're going to do today, is look for an airstrip. It's kind of a whiteout condition today, uh, not uh, flat and, and not easy to uh, sense where a good spot would be. But we're going to head north anyway and uh, try and find a, a flat area uh, for a plane. And, um, and then I guess that's about it. Uh, yesterday, there was, everybody kind of said their piece. Uh, I was quite, uh, quite moving. Um, let's see where we go from here. Um, there. Okay. Let's just panned around. Okay. Yes. I think that's that's about it. That brings I us up I think we should today. go and help with getting yeah. ready. We're at mile 32 and a half. 32 and a half nautical miles. Nautical miles, miles yes. Uh, from our starting point. Um, and we have about 27 miles, nautical miles to go to the pole. So um, uh, we're going to head north and see how much we can cover. And then uh, the plane will, once we, once we find a spot, then we have to tell the uh, pilots, uh, you know, where we are. And then it takes another 20 or 30 hours for them to actually reach us. Are uh, you getting a good shot of my beard? You wanted that. <laughs> I'm going to keep this yes. on until uh, we get back to New York. Okay. Goodbye. So this morning I'm running the sled and I'm standing behind it. Maddie's ahead with her, her team. And... Uh, there's Patricia and some other people getting ready to go over this pressure ridge. 
Coming a little. Yeah, there's Graham on the left. Trish. Looks like the dogs are having an argument up ahead. I have these dogs. Oh, there they go. All right, Jay, bring him on up. What? Bring him on up. And uh, it looks like this will be the end. We're waiting at our landing strip on day nine, and we hope a plane comes in tomorrow. We're gonna fly to the pole. We're at about 33, 34. Uh, so uh, that's it. Uh, we'll have a summary a little later. Kind of, we'll interview everybody and ask them what they thought of the trip. And uh, hopefully the plane will come in uh, tomorrow and we'll uh, go the remaining 27, 25 miles to the pole and uh, then see uh, if we can land, weather permitting. Now we're just setting up the tent and we're going to hang around here for a day or so, uh, waiting for the plane. There goes the uh, kitchen tent, we're putting it up. And the dogs are resting. Uh, Rick is now giving flight information to the... Uh, Who am I speaking to now? To the. Uh, Charter. Hi, Colin. Who, what, who will be flying up here to uh, fetch us? Do you know? Oh, okay. Do you have any uh, longer range weather? Roger. That's why we, we figured we'd get a spot here uh, today that looks uh, real solid and we'll uh, stand by for the weather. The weather, he said it's uh, all, they've got the same weather and resolute as here and he said it's all pretty well, the whole area is pretty well fogged over currently. And, uh, Any long term? No, he said he didn't know. He doesn't think they'll be. He said they, as though he was a pilot. He said he doesn't think anybody will be flying in this weather, you know. So. Ready, Jason? You ready? Yes. Okay. It's May 4th, and uh, for the last few days we've been stuck in bad weather. Uh, it was stop and go for various reasons. Uh, first, the group didn't think we could go any further. Uh, so, for a couple of days, we just kind of gave up. Some decided, gave up. Hmm? Some gave up. Some gave up. Uh, then we decided to proceed on. Graham fell, uh, not Graham, uh, Blake fell in the water the second time, and uh, we proceeded another hour. Then he was cold, so he stopped. Uh, and we stayed for another two nights at another site, um, about 26 miles from the pole, um, the 21 nautical mm -hmm. miles. Uh, then after a couple of days, we moved on to this pan. And uh, the weather has still been overcast, and we ran out of uh, food for the dogs, and we went on rationed food for ourselves. Um, all things considered, um, I was, I want, I just felt like throwing in the towel and just find, staying at the landing strip and not moving further. The, most of the group, the group pretty much wanted to move on, so it was really 
me against the group and... In the no, end, it, no, it wasn't, yes, well, it wasn't. Uh, they so. under, we, we, we all, we, most of us understood your reasoning and respected... Yeah, I and, tended uh, to be more conservative. We wanted to go on, but uh, we respected your opinions. Yeah, well, I was being cautious, and uh, I know Graham was disappointed because he really wanted to get to... He really, it's flashing he, he, batteries. Yeah, he really wanted to get to the pole. Anyway, the plane should come soon to pick us up, maybe tomorrow. It's on its way to your region. So uh, we'll talk again later. Maybe we'll see the plane come in tomorrow. Bye-bye. Were we happy to see this guy show up for an evacuation after maybe six days of bad weather? Finally, he's testing the runway now. Getting ready to leave now. We're loading up the plane, getting ready to fly south, ultimately to Iqaluit and Ottawa. This is a charter plane, and it will take us to the north of Elkmere Island, where we'll pick up a scheduled plane. Here comes Patrick. Patrick, wave.